Hi, welcome to Staffing for Startups and Small Businesses. I'm Julie Bellamy. I own SQL HR Suite, and I'm a boutique uh, solopreneur who is able to help small businesses and other organizations with things that you might not have the expertise to manage. So it's a pleasure to share some information with you today. It's exciting that you're able to hire either a new person or your first person. Um, there's some things that are really important that you do, and there's some other things that you've got a lot of flexibility in. But our goal today is to make sure that we help keep you legally compliant while you hire some great employees. A couple things first. Um, the position description is most important. So you're probably used to doing everything yourself, or at least a lot of it. So it's important to define the job very clearly. Uh, you want to be able to hire the right person with the right skills to be able to handle the responsibilities that you want them to handle. So you need to define it both for yourself as well as for the new employee. You don't want to be a micromanager. You want to be able to empower and uh, allow the new employee to handle their job. Another thing that we need to take a look at based on the work that needs to be done is, is this position an exempt position? Typically, that would be a salaried position, or is it a non-exempt position? You would typically pay the person at an hourly rate, and they are then eligible for overtime at time and a half. So it's really important to identify, is this a salary person not eligible for overtime, or an hourly person that is eligible for overtime? You can get a lot of position description formats online, but if you have any issues or need help, feel free to give a call. The next step is, what are you going to pay for this role? You may not know, so it's good to be able to go online and you can use salary.com, you can use Indeed, um, you can look at a number of jobs that are out there, compare your position description against what you see, and oftentimes it'll give you a good idea of the salary that's being offered and how it compares to yours. Another thing is, uh, are you going to include just a base salary? or will there be some type of bonus or profit sharing? Or is this a pretty key role where maybe you're bringing somebody into your organization and maybe you're sharing uh, an equity position with them? There's lots of considerations that go into those sorts of things that warrant further discussion. But speaking of paying people, do you have somebody to process your payroll and file your taxes? Uh, you're gonna need a W-4 for each employee to make sure that you take care of the right deductions. And another question, will you be offering any benefits to your employees? As a small business, you may or may not, but there's a lot of options out there that are available that are really cost effective and there are different ways that you can support your employees um, in benefits. Sometimes you can just give a stipend related to the cost of their personally acquired benefits. Sometimes you can participate in a different group that has benefits. There's a lot of benefits brokers around that are really knowledgeable and they're very cost effective in being able to help you. So now that you have the position defined, you know the type of candidate that you're looking for and you know what you're going to pay, you can start the recruiting process. So my first note, and I say danger awaits, a lot of times small businesses and entrepreneurs will hire a family friend or a relative. Um, sometimes this is good, sometimes it doesn't work out so well. I always encourage you to look at your options and see what other candidates are out there. Um, I myself worked in a couple different family businesses and it can be a great experience. It can also have some challenges associated with it. So use your network, look on LinkedIn, participate in local job fairs, social media, uh, different industry job boards they will all get you a great pool of candidates. Make sure you use an application. If you have access to an online system, that's fabulous. Otherwise, just use the paper version. What's really important and to stay legal is make sure that you're using the same selection criteria for every single applicant. Don't look at protected status type things such as family status, whether or not the person's married, where were they born, what languages, um, might be their native tongue. Um, do they have kids? None of that applies to the job. You only need to be looking at is the person able to meet the requirements of the job. 
Another thing that will be your next step is to develop some behavioral based questions that you'll use with each candidate that you interview. Behaviorally based questions ask, tell me about a time when you did this or that or the other thing. What did you do? How did it turn out? What did you learn from that? Um, have you ever experienced this type of situation? How did you handle it? What did you do? Again, we like to be able to use past experience as a predictor of future experience. It's really important to listen as you ask questions and people answer. Sometimes I find I learn more about what is not said, according to what I was expecting to hear, maybe than what a candidate did say. If you're able, always have somebody else involved in the interviewing and the selection process. It's important to get some really objective input. And when you're handling yourself, the interviews yourself and you're thinking um, in certain terms of maybe how you would do the job, it might be important to have another point of view. Sometimes, depending on the job, you may need to have some skills assessment done or maybe um, if this is a leadership role or a pretty critical role, you might want to have a behavioral uh, or leadership style assessment done. It's good to make sure you have somebody that's a right fit with you and your company. It's important to be mindful of different biases. Uh, a lot of times we aren't aware of our own implicit biases, but pay attention to those things as you go through the process. Make sure you've got a great diverse slate of candidates that you're looking at. When it comes to compensation and perks of the job, make sure that you are treating your employees equitably. And don't forget inclusion. Make sure that your employees feel valued and feel a part of your organization. Another thing to take a look at is you're interviewing for a current position, so you're looking probably fairly tactically at what this person is going to do. But keep in mind, this is an investment in somebody, in an investment in your business. And what is this person going to do for you long term? Do they have the ability to grow? Are they going to be happy working for you long term? What will you need to do to develop them so that they're satisfied and you're able to retain them as part of your business? So after you get through your interviewing, you get that additional input. You're going to hire the best candidate who shares your values and your passion and is going to help you achieve the vision that you have for your business. The next step is really important, the hiring and the onboarding. This is where there's some pretty particular things you're going to want to do. Um, as a small business, you may not have a lot of policies, you may not have a full handbook, but it's really important to document what is important. You've taken the time and put all your efforts into starting up your business. It's important, the culture, the reputation, the brand of your business, and any employees that you bring in, you want to make sure that they carry out those things in the way that you want them to do. Um, so we need to have, uh, whether it's a simple handbook or just a code of ethics or code of conduct, that's important to have. One of the things you're going to want to do in Michigan is clearly state that you're an at-will employer, which means people can come and go and you're able to hire and fire. But it doesn't mean you can fire indiscriminately. You need to take care of your people. You need to be doing the right things. It starts with a good offer letter. Make sure that you have one that has been legally reviewed and is drafted based on the needs of your business. You can get these off, offline, you can tweak them, but there's going to be some important things. For example, if you've got some product or technology um, that's proprietary, you're going to want to make sure there's a non-disclosure agreement in your offer letter. And in addition, you may want to have a non-poaching clause for a period of time. If again, you've got knowledge or services or products that are proprietary. Are you going to need to do a background check or a drug screen? There's different resources that are available for very cost effective rates, but you need an authorization signed by the employee in order to have these things done. And then you have to really protect that information in your employment file, whether it's hard copy or electronic, that's got to be separated out from other information. It's good to have an onboarding checklist. I've included one in these slides that just give you some idea of the basics that you'll want to cover when you bring an employee on board. 
It's good to have a training plan. What is the person supposed to learn in the first 30, 60, 90 days? What are they supposed to do? Have an idea of the different conversations that you're going to have with the person. So if they're not doing well in the first 30 days, that might be a time where you need to have some tough conversations or see, do they need some more training? What is it that they need to be successful in the job? And then think longer term. How are you going to evaluate this person's performance long term? Again, I talked about setting up your employee files. They can be hard copy or electronic, but they need to be protected under lock or key if they're hard copy. And again, in a very safe spot on your drives um, if it's electronically. The I-9 is, uh, is a government required document that establishes eligibility to work in the U.S. This is important. You need to fill this out within three days of the employee starting and it needs to be kept in a separate file. The other things that you're going to want to do is think about the type of information that you want to share with your employees. How do you communicate the policies that you have, the different processes that you engage in? What are the cultures uh, of your company and the different goals of your company? How do you want to carry out your business? What is your brand? How do you work together? How do you want to interface with customers or clients? Make sure you share your vision and your passion so that the person that you hire can carry that on as well. So here's the onboarding checklist I mentioned. Some of the basic employment documents that you need to maintain is the position description, application, resume, the signed offer letter. Again, I mentioned you need to keep any uh, background check and drug screen results separate, but um, it can be in a separate folder in the file or a separate space in your electronic files. Benefit enrollment forms, signed copies of handbooks, uh, the W-4. Again, the I-9 in a separate file. And during the onboarding process where you bring the person on and you say, welcome to the team, here's how we do things here, so happy to have you. You want to cover that information I talked about, your vision, your strategy, your goals, any proprietary information, what products do you sell, what are the services, how do you want them represented, what systems do you use. Um, all of those things need to be covered in the onboarding session. Please, please make sure that you have the technology set up for the person, their email, um, any access to different systems they need because they're going to need to go through that training right away. Nothing says, geez, I don't care about you, like, oh, we don't have your laptop yet or, oh gosh, we need to get you set up. Again, how that person feels on the first day is really, really important and sets the stage for your ongoing relationship. If you're a small business, you probably don't need a phone listing, but are there frequent contacts or people with whom this employee will interface regularly? Take the time to introduce them. If there's certain people that they're going to be meeting with, set up a quick Zoom call or send an introductory email, just paving the path there so that they uh, have good ease of communication. Again, make sure you cover expectation, yours, theirs, it's important to talk regularly, communicate openly, and make sure that the person feels um, free to ask questions or elevate issues. Those are the things that you really need to do to get started, but there's more that happens throughout the years. Uh, you need to think about how are you going to review the person's compensation um, and how will you give an adjustment? Is it just going to be a market-based, what everybody else does? Is it going to be based on performance criteria? Are there certain goals or metrics that this person needs to achieve? Um, and make sure they know that. If their compensation is based on their performance, it's important to understand that. Again, how are you measuring performance? What types of conversations will you have regularly so they get good feedback? How are they engaged? Um, again, as a small business owner or maybe an, an entrepreneur, perhaps you've been doing the job and it's really tough to let go and let somebody else do it and sit back and let them go. But that's part of the selection process to make sure that they're going to do things in a way that you're okay with. But you've got to empower them and step back and let them go. Um, you'll find as you go through the employment relationship, you may need to develop some other policies 
And unfortunately, we don't like to think about it, but you're going to have some employee relations issues. You're going to need to have some co tough conversations and you may be in a situation where you may need to terminate someone. Again, all conversations that are major topics in and of themselves. Um, and most importantly, organizational effectiveness. How are things working? Are things going smoothly? Uh, do you have good definition of your processes and how you interact with each other in the systems? What do you need to tweak? What do you need to smooth out a little bit more? It's been a pleasure to talk to you on these topics. I wish you all the best in hiring your employees. And if you need to talk about anything, my contact information is here. Always happy to have a conversation and, and answer some questions. Good luck to you.